camera froze up on my phone. All right. Well, welcome everyone. I'm Chef Jessica. I, well, I guess we'll start getting started. I know some of you have been waiting a minute. Chef Cindy will help out. Uh, mute you guys if you have any questions like that. Um, we're going to be doing some costing today. We're going to go over some basic costing principles, beginning stuff. Um, I will stop a couple times and ask some questions too. So feel free to throw them in the chat if you have them, but hold off on asking out loud. Um, if you could all mute yourself so we don't have background noise, that would be lovely too. Um, but I'm going to share my screen with you and we'll kind of get started. So basic costing. All right. Um, costing principles. We're going to kind of just go over some rounding numbers, conversion, simple things, kind of basic principles before we kind of get too involved in the program um, and the course itself. So rounding rules, your beginning rounding. Um, we have zero through four stays the same. You don't round. I guess I should start from the beginning. Uh, we have, when you look at your digit, you're looking to the right of your digit. So the examples I have in front of us here, we're talking money. A lot of the class you're in right now will be talking costing, talking money, things of that nature. Um, so you're always going to the nearest penny. So you're always looking to the right of that digit to determine what to do with that digit to the left. Zero through four stays the same. I like to think of those, if you struggle with this, I like to think of them as very nice numbers. They are so nice, they let the other number stay as they are, they don't make them change. Five through nine are quote unquote mean bossy numbers. Make the number next to it change who they are and they make them go up. Um, so if you ever struggle with rounding, I really, really like that principle, just a little thing to think about. Um, but that is some basic rounding. When we are talking portions, portion size, sizes, uh, serving sizes, things like that, we're talking whole numbers. So there is no rounding when we are talking portions and servings. Everything to the right of that decimal falls off. It drops completely. You can't serve a partial portion. You can't serve a part of a, can't serve a quarter of a cheeseburger to somebody. So when we're talking a lot of costing and a lot that we're doing in costing, that's where we're talking. Uh, so that drops off. Let's see, some basic conversions. You are typically converting over to the smaller unit. So whatever unit is your smallest is typically the one you're gonna go for. Your common conversions, if you don't have them written down somewhere, I highly, highly, highly recommend you having like a master list of, you know, one tablespoon equals three teaspoons, four cups equals one quart. Those type of conversions, especially when we get into the ounces, pounds, gallons, things like that. Um, definitely, definitely have that master note list written somewhere, printed off. That will help you greatly throughout this class and just in the kitchen in general. Um, that was kind of quick though. So I want to stop here real quick and see how everyone is doing with that. Sorry, I know I have really bad lighting, so you can't see me very well today. Um, but everyone good with rounding, kitchen, common conversions, things like that? No. Hi, Chef. Okay. Hi, Chef. Jeff. Hi. So we were waiting for you. I'm um, in another classroom, I think. Um, all of us, I think we got the time and everything kind of misconstrued because we were waiting for you. Oh, geez. Well, I'm in here. <laughs> so I'm glad you could join me. So um, you said two o'clock because I got your message and it said two o'clock. When you said two o'clock, are y'all just now starting or have y'all have y'all been starting? We just started 2 p.m. Central time. Okay, everybody was in a whole nother classroom waiting for you. John is waiting for you. Uh, Teresa is waiting for you. Like we are in, was in a totally different class looking crazy. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, we'll have to fix that and make sure we get you in the right place. But we just started. Um, I was just kind of covering basic rounding principles. So we will go back to that. Um, I mean, really, if you struggle with some rounding and basic rounding, come to our math foundations or look at the math foundations one. That one covers rounding and goes through rounding examples greatly. 
Um, but really rounding is just zero through four, you stay the same, five through nine. And actually, just to give you a couple examples, if we were to round this to the nearest hundredth place, so your hundredth would be where the six is, you would look to this three to determine what to do to the six. And so since it's zero through four, it stays the same. So that would stay 109.76. I guess I was rounding it, but anyway, um, kind of go back to this. So rounding is zero through four stays the same, five through nine, you round up. So it changes and goes up. When you're talking serving size, portions, whole numbers, everything to the right of the decimal falls off and you have your just whole number. You cannot have a partial portion. You cannot serve a partial portion, partial serving. So anytime your chef are on a test or quiz and they ask you, round it to the nearest whole serving or what is the nearest whole or how many servings can you have? Whatever number you come up with, you always drop everything to the right. Now, when you're talking costing, money, things like that, that is where you do the rounding. That's where the zero through four comes in. Um, so converting a percentage to a, or a decimal to a percentage, you either can multiply by 100 or you move this decimal two spots to the right. It is the exact same thing um, to throw in my example we have here. We have 0.25. If you times it by 100, that gets our 25%. Same thing if you move it or this example, we have 0.8493 times that by 100. And we can practice some of these problems too as we have some time. I just wanna get through some of the basics, principles and things like that before we kind of get into more examples. Um, but welcome if you're just joining us. We are just covering basic math principles, rounding, converting, uh, percentages, sorry, from decimals, things like that. So just your basic math functions. The biggest thing to note in your costing class in general and in all culinary math really is read the question. You may be doing the math right. You may be answering a question correctly, but read the question completely. Figure out what they're asking for. You need to figure out and determine what is this question even asking of me before answering anything. Because some of the questions will be worded differently to not necessarily fool you, but if it's asking you what a percentage is and you say 0.25 or you say a decimal, you may have that answer right. Your math may be completely accurate, but you answered the wrong question. You gave a decimal, not a percentage. So your biggest thing that you're going to want to do throughout this whole program is just make sure you are reading it clearly. Make sure you're reading the question and answering the right question in the right format. If it asks you how many ounces are in something or how many pounds are in this, make sure you're answering in the right formula, the right format. Um, if you answer how many ounces it is, but it's asking you how many pounds, that's an easy way to get that wrong with doing the math right, which is like the absolute worst thing that can happen is that you have the math right, you're doing the problem accurately, but you, you don't answer it in the right way. So always double check. Anytime you're doing this, if you get the right answer, kind of go back in your head, think about what you're answering before you put in that final answer. That is the biggest piece of advice with culinary math, for sure. Um, your units of measure are huge. You always wanna make sure you're in the right unit of measure or in the same unit of measure. If we have a question that starts off in pounds, something else is in ounces and we're asking the final answer announces, you wanna make sure you're converting that. So common kitchen conversions, um, like I was saying earlier, make sure you have them written down, you know, or just have them memorized. Eventually you'll memorize them if you aren't there yet. You know, 16 ounces are in one pound, 128 ounces are in one gallon. Those type of things will definitely help you having them written down. Uh, let's see, okay. So I'm gonna kind of pause here well, I'm not going to pause yet. So let's kind of dive into some formulas. And I really, really highly recommend you do some of these with me while we're doing them. So when we are kind of going through different examples, different problems, 
don't just watch me do it or listen to me doing it. Put it in your phone, put it in your calculator. Just walking through the steps will really help you learn. So when we're talking how many portion servings can you have, can you make? You basically take the starting amount you have, the quantity you have, the amount you have, and you divide it by your portion size. And this will get you how many portions you with what you actually have. So looking at this, going through this first example, if we have 800 ounces of cheese and each portion uses 12 ounces, that would be 800 divided by 12. Too many. And this gets us 66.6666667. So because we're talking portions and servings, there is no rounding. Everything to the right of this decimal drops off completely. And the answer is 66 portion. Now I know uh, a lot of people will mix up the way, the order of operations in what way you do it. Um, the best piece of advice or the best thing you can do to double check your work is if you get an answer, just think, does that answer even make sense with what this question is asking? So roles reversed, this is completely wrong. Do not do what I am saying, red flag. Um, but let's say you're one of those people who just mixes up the order and you would do 12 divided by 800. And we're asking you how many portions we have. That would be 0 0.015. Now, if you were to answer, we have 0 0.015 portions and 800 ounces of cheese and each portion is 12 ounces, that doesn't even make sense in the answer. You can't have that little of portions. So if you do the math and you get that, you know you're wrong. Let's say you accidentally times it because you forget that we want to divide and you multiply 800 by 12. That's 9,600. There's no way you can have 9,600 portions out of 800 ounces of cheese, right? So this is, if, if you are one of those people and I've been there myself, do not get me wrong, where you know the formula, you know how to use it, but you just kind of mix it up. Double check your work that way. Just think if your answer even makes sense with what you are doing. Um, so our next example, we have 36 pounds of steak. Each portion uses one pound. So if we take that 36 and we divide it by one, because they're both in pounds, so we can stay the same, that gets us 36 portions. So that is a good example there. How many, how much do you need? So this is literally the exact same problem, just reversed. So you take how much servings you, how many your total servings you have times your portion size, and that equals how much you need to buy or how much you need to order in your pantry. So in this example, we have 62 salads is what we need. Each portion uses two ounces of tomatoes. So if we use two ounces of tomatoes on 62, two salads, you take your 62, you times it by two, and that gets us our 124 ounces. You know you'll need to buy 124 ounces for 62 salads. Let's go to this next one. Um, we have one batch of soup uses six cups of stock. How much do I need to make a quadruple batch? So quadruple would be four. So if you take your six cups and you times it by four, that gets you 24. That's how many cups of broth you would need, or stock, excuse me. Um, those are kind of our basics there. And I do have some, um, I guess before we do that, I'm gonna go back to this. I'm gonna stop it here real quick. Does anyone have any questions in regards to those formulas and how we apply them and you uh oh I think she froze up Give her a minute, guys, and she'll be right back. Hopefully.
Four. Okay, can someone repeat that? It was one batch of soup uses six cups. How much what? One full batch. You're in which is great. I'm gonna get into this. Y'all are breaking up really, really bad. I can't even hear. Jessica, you real quick. Sorry, hold on a second. Back here in just a second. Are you there, Jess? So let me share my screen again. Hey, Jessica. And we will kind of get started. All right. So looking at this, I just told you the answer. No, you didn't because- All right. So, and feel free to throw your answers in the chat. Um, Ms. Yeah, shout them out if you want, but let's kind of work. <laughs> I can't even hear it. That's never good. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. We can hear you now, Chef Jess. We just, you're still frozen, your face is, which is fine. And there she goes. Okay. So um, the last part, let me see if I can find her sheets. Um, sorry, guys. I have the same sheets someplace. Let me see if I can catch them really quick. <laughs> Darn. Well, make sure I've got the right sheet. Oh, she's back. I know we got to love technology, don't we? Can you guys hear me okay? Nope. No. I'm trying to make sure I'm in her right slides, guys, before I jump back into that. Chef Jessica, you're still frozen and lagging. Can't hear you. All right. Got you covered. All right, guys, I'm going to share my screen once I can find it. All right. I'm going to share my screen with you. And Chef Jessica will jump back on here when and if she can. So she was. Thank you. She was right here. Uh, week one practice. This is more conversion. So you're going to always take your big unit, multiply it times your conversion number. Get small frozen. You're also going to take your little unit divided by your conversion number is going to equal your small unit total. No, it's not. It's going to equal your large unit total. We need to change that. Don't want to confuse anybody. All right. So for an example, how many teaspoons is in a tablespoon? You know that there's three teaspoons per tablespoon. So if you have eight tablespoons, that's your big unit. You're going to multiply it times your conversion number. Your conversion number is going to be three because there's three teaspoons per tablespoon. So that means you're going to have 24 teaspoons in eight tablespoons. Yeah, 24. Or 24, I'm sorry. <laughs> Good thing for correcting my math, and it's right here in front of me. How many cups is in a quart? Big unit. Eight. You're going to have 48 cups. 
and a quart. What do you You have, so there's four cups in a quart and you have 12 quarts, it's gonna make 48 cups per quart. How many ounces in four pounds? Well, there's 16 ounces in a pound. You have four pounds, so you're gonna multiply 16 times four is gonna give you 64 ounces. Chef Jessica, are you back? I can try to be. Can yeah. you hear me okay? Kind of off and on. Do you want me to continue? Yes, thank you. Okay. No problem. How many gallons is in 1,152 ounces? So you're gonna take your little unit, which is your ounces, divided by your conversion number, which we know there's 128 ounces in a gallon to get our big unit total. So we're gonna take this 1152 divided by 128 to get nine gallons. Is that making sense to everyone? Kind of. Guys, I'll be honest. When it comes to conversions, until you um, memorize the basic conversions, use Google. Google is an amazing thing. It is will be your best friend until you get your conversions down. I still sometimes use, um, yep. Renee, did you have a question? <laughs> 